So, folks, I am happy to inform you that Judge Tanya Chutkan has made a major move today that changes everything in the case, and all the changes we get are terrible outcomes for Donald Trump and his dumb, dumb legal team. Because fundamentally, guys, what this judge is doing is putting the hammer to Donald Trump, but doing it in a way that doesn't give Trump any ability to complain or pretend like he's being mistreated. And critically, it avoids making him a quote unquote martyr of the conservative movement. And that is essential the way she's handling this. And we're going to break that down as well as a key move that she's made, a key announcement that does change everything. But hit the like and subscribe button because what people are noting is that she is the master it seems better than any judge we've seen thus far, maybe of really striking that balance between letting Donald Trump, you know, do what he wants, you know, as terms of what citizens have the freedoms to, but also punishing him in clear ways without, again, either breaking the rules and being too unfair to a defendant or especially without making it look like Donald Trump is being treated harshly. All of that is brilliant by her. And what this notes here is that it gives her the ability that when she does need to eventually crack the whip fully, she'll have the leeway to do so. Listen to this because it helps set up the announcement that's coming and the critical move she made. I'm, I just keep going back to everything I've ever seen uh, regarding proceedings before federal judges and federal courts. And, you know, we talk about equal justice under the law. Yes, Donald Trump has actually been indicted for trying to overthrow a presidential election. But Chuck, I just, again, in, in my limited experience, uh, but, you know, being around this a good bit, I've just never known of a federal judge that would allow a defendant to publicly threaten a prosecutor, stir up death threats against a prosecutor, let alone question the integrity of the court itself, the federal judge itself. I'm wondering, I mean, equal justice under the law, like, it, it, are, are we carving out a, a special exception for Donald Trump here if, if his bail is not revoked? Yeah, I, I hope not, Joe, and I don't think so. I think the judge is handling this properly for now so far, right? She's being patient and firm, mm -hmm. and she's laying down clear rules. In other words, for instance, minor point, she didn't give uh, Mr. Trump's lawyers more time to argue a frivolous motion. She's requiring their response today. I've seen judges mm -hmm. do something like this. They're patient to a point and then they're no longer patient. And this is reasons sort of number 37, 38, and 39 why you don't wanna be Mr. Trump's lawyers because you're forced over and over again to say things that are nonsense and to take positions in court that are frivolous. And a little context here might be helpful. When the government's asking for a protective order, that is not an unusual ask. The government is about to provide reams of information and data, some of it quite sensitive to the defense team as part of the discovery process. And if the defense misuses that stuff, if Mr. Trump starts posting the names of witnesses and what they say on social media, there are real consequences to that. Not just that witnesses could be intimidated or harassed or threatened, but potentially worse. And so I think the judge is watching this very carefully, handling it appropriately. And if you push her too far, there will be consequences for Mr. Trump and his lawyers as there ought to be. So it says that, right? Like on the one hand, I, I think a lot of us, and I include myself in this are like, why isn't this SOB locked up? And I don't think we're wrong for asking that question. I don't want to suggest that we stop asking the question, why isn't Donald Trump locked up pending trial? Because he's certainly done the sorts of things, not just once or twice, but multiple times that constitute, you know, violating the terms of his release. But there is a point to be made that the judge is being very careful. And she's doing this in a way that, again, it shows to the world that it's Donald Trump being the unreasonable one. Because judges in these high-profile cases understand that, again, it's a political thing. It's not partisan, but when you put Donald Trump on trial, it's political. 
and the judge understands the political process. Now, again, that's not going to ultimately determine her rulings or how she handles evidence, the questions that are allowed to be asked to the jury and how she manages the interactions with the jury and all of that. She'll be you know, fair on that. But she also understands that there's this political ecosystem influencing the case, especially from the MAGA wing of the Republican Party. And if she goes all out against Trump right away, they're going to backlash. What she's doing is being careful. And this kind of re, you know, goes on it again, that she is playing this, you know, very cautiously, but effectively. Intimidate the witness. And uh, listen, let me just help everybody that's involved in this case. If they can't figure it out, um, Donald Trump was trying to get the names uh, or, or people around Donald Trump were trying to get the names of FBI agents out that searched his Mar-a-Lago home, desperately trying to get them out so they would be threatened. Um, we now have the same thing that will happen here. They give they give Donald Trump information. Maybe he doesn't post it on social media, but he gives it to Steve Bannon or Roger Stone or somebody else. And they put the names out. I mean, it, it seems to me that this is going to have to be a tough protective order and Donald Trump's going to have to be told he's going to jail if if the terms are, you know, bells revoked, if the terms are violated, because we all know the terms are going to be violated. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, Chuck obviously knows better than me. Uh, he's more seasoned in this field than I am. But I do happen to imagine, I have to imagine that uh, we are in unique circumstances here. It's probably unprecedented that a high-profile defendant in this case makes such overt threats against the prosecutor uh, in such a public forum. Uh, you know, I think in any other case, uh, if a client did something like this, uh, you would see a, a harsh rebuke from the judge. Uh, patience, is, I suppose, is helpful here in the long run. But Joe, I'm with you. I, I, it's hard to see how this is tenable at all. I mean, look, if you look at it, putting aside the legal stuff, if you look at the political stuff, Trump's, in, you know, almost the entire reason for his campaign at this juncture is he's going to fight his prosecution. He's running on a platform that he is being unfairly persecuted and unfairly prosecuted here. And so he has to be out there publicly railing against Jack Smith, railing against Mike Pence, who almost undoubtedly will be a witness in this trial. His own, Trump's own lawyer has said he wants to call Mike Pence as a witness. Uh, it's compelling him, uh, if not for his personality, it's compelling him also to uh, take these steps that are incredibly radical uh, for a defendant to take. And it's only a matter of time before the judge has to call his bluff, right? I mean, this is not going to stop. Mm -hmm. He's not going to rein right. it in because he has to campaign with this posture. And once the judge calls his bluff, uh, I, you know, who knows what the consequences of that are, uh, politically speaking. And I think that's vital. And I want to read you some reporting on this regard too, right? I want to read you some reporting because what a legal expert and, 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 and analyst is noting is that this gives uh, Chutkan the ability to put Donald Trump in a world of pain in the way he would hate most of all, but which does not make him a political martyr. Because we're thinking, and again, I don't think unreasonably, the dude should be locked up until he's tried. He's innocent until proven guilty. Um, and I feel that bail should be given to almost everybody all the time because you shouldn't lock up innocent people and you are innocent until proven guilty. But if somebody is a real risk to, 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 to safety and a flight risk and a risk to a fair trial, then they probably do need to be locked up pending that trial. Donald Trump, though, his biggest fear in many ways is not necessarily being locked up early, but rather the trial going quickly. And what this expert says is that this gives the ability for Chutkan, and this is part of her big announcement, but only part one, that this gives her the ability to expedite things as a punishment to Donald Trump. And it says here, in a column, Dennis Aftergut said the judge will be measured in her responses to the former president pushing the limits of her admonishments, but he already has two strikes against him in a very short time. As he wrote, with defendants who repeat defiant, who repeat defiant acts, as it's typical for courts to incrementally escalate from warning to sanctions. Trump has learned that he will probably get three strikes before truly serious consequences accrue. Judge Chutkan could surprise him. As for what the judge can do, along with sanctions and possibly a gag order, the legal, act, legal expert suggested that he could do, she could do the one thing Trump doesn't want to happen, conduct a speedy trial that 
could result in more than one felony conviction before the election. Having only one escape route out of Dodge is something experienced crooks avoid. You could get so focused on it that you're blind to the sheriff who has you under surveillance. Judge Chutkan has broad discretion over Trump's D.C. trial date. Anger her and you could add incentive to set a trial as early as is consistent with the time Trump lawyers need to adequately prepare. And what that's saying is, you know, locking him up might be might be justified, but could be politically fraught. Chutkan basically saying, I'm going to clear the schedule. And as like the highest ranking judge of all the cases, I'm going to basically clear the entire schedule and make the case as early as legally possible to punish Trump. And this gets to the latest thing, because one of the things Donald Trump has asked for is for her to be fired and recused from the case. And that's already been rejected by Chutkan, especially given all she said. As he did, uh, as he blanketed the Sunday shows. First and foremost, recusal of the judge or getting uh, getting the trial moved out of D.C. As we saw, Trump even posted about wanting the judge to be recused again this morning um, on True Social. What are the chances either of these things happen? Extremely minimal. This crime happened in D.C. The alleged charges, all this has occurred in D.C. That a victim is in D.C. This trial is happening in D.C. And the recusal is extremely thin. Yes, the judge made some remarks in January 6 criminal cases about Trump. But the indictment, as you know, Jack Smith made it very clear, is largely not about January 6 itself. It's everything that led up to January 6. So I don't see any reason to believe this thing is being moved or that she will be recused. And then I think a a different person than Donald Trump could act, you know act with a scalpel instead of a sledgehammer here and carefully choose his words and be <laughs> careful about what he says in the debate stage. Be careful about what he says to his associates. We all know Donald Trump's not going to do that. <laughs> and I guess from comes. my what from my perspective, what I think the judge is going to do because she's a very savvy litigator, a lot of experience. I think what she's going to do is instead of trying to take action based on his speech, let's say in a debate or with his advisors, I think she's just going to continue to rule against him. She's going to continue to accelerate the trial date. Uh, ultimately, from my perspective, she's going to teach him ultimately that at the end of the day, she's the decider, and there's a real big consequence that comes if you're going to try to constantly flout the judge's rules. So I think it'll be indirect. And I think ultimately, as a result of you know him flaunting and going going against the judge's rules, I suspect he's going to get a speedier and speedier trial. That 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 decision recently to to deny a motion for just a three day extension, I think, is a preview of what's to come. So it's not going to work, and we don't even need to hear what she's saying. She's announced her decision on the Trump recusal thing via her existing voluminous work on J six. All the arguments Trump's making about why a trial isn't fair in D.C. have been made hundreds of times by regular J6 thugs. And Shut Can in particular has rejected them every single time. Trump is pissed off the judge and she's going to punish him, but in a way that doesn't make him look like a hero.